Hello, everybody, and welcome to twitch.tv slash D... I'm sorry, CLX Gaming TV. <laughs> this is CLX Foundry Live, where we go deep inside a custom build and assemble it from the ground up. Uh, I'm your host here today and joined by Paul Steffens, our lead technical expert, and, of course, Hayden Hutchinson has come back as our master builder. Uh, the show comes in two different parts today. We've got our assembly show, and then we've got the speed run. Uh, with Hayden, where he is finally allowed to use power tools on the set again. And we're going to see if he can assemble 16 PCs in 25 minutes. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, that being said, don't forget, you can still get a chance to enter for that beautiful pink machine you see behind them, right in between them, by typing exclamation give peak. And it's, a, it's an extraordinary AMD build, and you definitely want a chance to get in there. Any of the pink codes that you see in this show are all worth 100 entries each. You can get codes not only by showing up to our streams, but also in our Discord at discord.gg slash CLX Gaming, as well as our social medias. That's YouTube, TikTok, and Twitter at CLX Gaming. And of course, you can pick them up on the weekends over on my channel. So uh, with that being said, gentlemen, we've got a PC today. Who's it for and what are we doing? We do. This PC is for me. I'm trying to get 99 fishing and RuneScape. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, no, just kidding. We have an out-of-the-world <laughs> build today. Um, so we've got an i9 13900K, a 4090, 32 gigs, a DDR5, 5600 gig RAM, uh, going in that ASRock Z, uh, going into an ASRock Z790 Steel Legend. Um, so I'm going to give Hayden the motherboard here, and I'm going to go grab this case. This case is really something special, so let me grab it. Awesome. Uh, pretty boy, hello, welcome. Excited to see the stream. Just ordered a build from y'all a few days ago. Nice. Awesome. That's great. Definitely let us know how that uh, works out. Look at this case. What is this? This is gorgeous. I told you it was out of this world. Oh, my. I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> it's an otherworldly opportunity. It is. That's great. I like so this it. This is our custom space design. This is all custom paint that we do here. Yeah, it's it's this is all gorgeous. I know we're working on getting Paul's mic up, everybody. Don't worry. Um, but the yeah, that paint job is is absolutely wicked, and the ability for the artist to do that is spectacular. Kyle's been kicking butt doing a lot of different things, so I, I'm excited to see how this one looks when it's fully built. Yeah, what's what I really like, and really what everybody here likes about these space cases is all these are done by hand. No two are the same. They just look really good, so it's always a surprise to see what we get afterwards. So, that being said, I'm going to start pulling the panels off of this case. I'll show them to the camera, too, before I put them down so you guys can get a better look at it. Nice. <clears throat> look at that. That's gorgeous. A scream for me joke? Okay, there's an irony in their need of temperance because uh, in high school, I actually was on tour and was the Phantom for the Phantom of the Opera uh, for, our, for our area. It was weird. It was cool. God, those panels are just, yeah, they're astounding. All right, so let's get, let's get started with some of these parts and pieces. Uh, this is going to be mounted on a ASRock Z690 Steel Legend. That's a 13900K that we've got going in there. Incredible, uh, incredible processor. Let's talk about that processor and some of its power. What are some of the cool features about it? Yeah, so like I so said, this is the i9-13900K, the 32 thread processor. So how that works on this one is it's got, uh, the cores are split between performance and efficiency cores. So this has okay. eight, eight performance cores, also known as P cores, which have hyper-threading, so we get 16 threads out of our eight also have 16 e cores which is for efficiency gotcha all right, all right we're gonna we're gonna fix my <laughs> fix paul's mic here and ch as we're working on things and getting it set up but you know what uh hayden's mic is great i'm assuming <laughs> and uh hayden we can talk a little about the z6 the z790 steel legend which is it's a ddr5 board if i'm not mistaken yes DDR5, 
and uh, the spin dot two is blazing. So. Yeah, I noticed that you got multiple M.2s on here. Yes, got one here, one here. Yeah, there's two under that long one at the bottom. <clears throat> yep, so it uh, comes out with one a total of one blazing. That's a PCIe Gen 5 uh, M.2. And then you've got four hypers, which is the Gen 4, uh, plus eight SATA 3s. Yes. It is a really nice board. With some nice RGB as well. Yeah, I'm noticing this window into here. I've never seen that before. There's like a window into the I.O. Are you sure that lights up? I think it does, yeah. Oh, awesome. Nice. <clears throat> Uh, and of course, if you're here and you got questions, please let us know in the chat. We'll get them as quickly as possible. And if we have an answer, uh, awesome. Uh, we do have an answer coming in from first timer gaming fat man 420. Uh, what kind of GPU would you recommend for an Alienware Aurora R7? Hmm. I don't know what that is. I feel like Alienware builds are usually just all in one. Yeah, yeah. So I yeah, mean, for GPU, it probably already comes with one. No, but I'm you not. Upgrade. Yeah. Do you, if you know what GPU you currently have, we could give you a recommendation on an upgrade there. Yeah, that's an excellent point. But, um, but yeah, just for that, I think they're usually kind of like uh, like pre-built configuration sets. Um, that aren't really customizable, although I know you can do some customization. Yep, definitely, uh, definitely true statement there. Uh, Ellison Milena, hello, how are you? How are you? Uh, Rubble seventy eight asks, have uh, have you ever built a system inside the Corsair five thousand D? I don't think we've done a five thousand D. We have done a thousand few thousand D's. D's, which are huge builds. Hayden actually just did one of those. It wasn't open. It looked really good, really big system. Um, I'm assuming, is the 5,000 bigger than the 1,000D? I would I assume, assume it's a bigger so. number, but the 1,000D is already a really large case. I don't know how much bigger you can get. Yeah. <laughs> it's the size of a car. Yeah, it's like, you see, like, you can fit two radiators side by side in the top and front. That case, I just, like, it's huge. The build I just finished had yeah. 21 bands in it. Yeah. Holy God, yeah. that's in, that's ridiculous. Yeah, it's Push a big pull Grim Attitude did come up with a, has a great question. It says, for a good streaming PC, what is the best thing to focus on having? Um, I, I can, uh, do you guys want me, am I, you cool if I answer this one? Yeah. All right, so I, as a, as a content creator, I've been a full-time content creator for basically almost a decade now. Uh, and I run a two PC system. For my streaming build, I wanna make sure that I have a really good multi-threaded processor that can, that can handle many different things at once. But the key build element on these is your RAM and your capture card. The RAM being, so this has 32, uh, this system has 32 gigs of RAM, thank God, uh, because you need that to be able to help buffer all of the different things that are happening at once. But your capture card is gonna be the big key thing. I personally use Aver Media. Um, because they, so Aver Media's cards are built with an onboard processor. The internal cards are absolutely spectacular. They work right out the gate. They've got one that's even like, a, it's a dual, it's a dual capture card. So if you're using a DSLR camera, you can use your HDMI cable and plug it into the back of the capture card along with either your gaming PC or your console with the pass through for the gaming PC or the console to your gaming monitor. And now you've got everything coming in through one card. The card is processing all of the video on, it, on its own, and then o all OBS has to do is encode it. That's it. And it makes it so much easier. Um, I, my streaming system has a 1070 in it. That's all I have for a graphics card in there. Um, but yeah, that's, that's that would be my best recommendation on that one. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. And, and I have I have used multiple different companies capture cards. Avermedia's are the best in my opinion. So, yeah. Uh in need of temperance uh in need of temperance says if we wanted a specific color case that you don't have, i.e. I like more of a forest emerald green and the green you have is more neon jade. Uh how would they go about requesting that? Uh, yeah, it, about green, about colors. 
if you have a case that's not quite the color they're looking for, is there a possibility to um, to get a different color? And yes, there is a possibility. Obviously, we can't guarantee anything. Um, but if you have like a specific paint color that you found from, you know, where, wherever you're looking at paint, you can get a hold of our support staff and, and we can see what we can do. As if that paint's available for us, we should be able to do it. Um, obviously, you know, cool. it depends on availability here and everything. So I don't want to make any promises we can't keep. Um, but you can definitely send it to us and we can see what we can do. Uh Radical, before we get onto the motherboard, I'm sorry, we've got another question. Uh, Radical Stray says, at what point is there diminishing returns when it comes to fan count in a typical ATX case? Mm, that's a good question. So fans are actually pretty expensive nowadays if you're going for like a high-end fan. They can really add up. So for me, if you have a full ATX case, typically if it's like the traditional style where you've got your intakes in the front and your exhaust in the back, I would do a minimum of three intakes on your front and one exhaust in the back. Now, if it's like an 011 or something like that where your intake's on the bottom, um, I would do three in the bottom, three in the top, and one in the back, for so seven there. Um, so it kind of depends on the design, but um, for most cases, you really can get away with doing four. Cool. Awesome. All right. Uh, let's, uh, so jumping back into the build, uh, let's take a look at this. Obviously, we've talked a little bit about the... Uh, multiple different M.2s, which are all covered under some really interesting looking uh, heat yeah, spreaders, right. not heat spreaders. Yeah, heat sinks, yep. Yeah, heat sinks. Mm -hmm. There we go. We're all having word, word salads today. It's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's take a look at some of those. You mentioned that one of them has two slots under it. Yeah, so that very bottom one here, we'll show you. I'll tilt this up. So you can see all the different heat spreaders on this board. Now, this bottom one is a really long piece. So we've got a slot under here and a slot under here. So they share the same heat spreader, um, but so there's two there. Gotcha. Perfect. And, of course, and so which one are we going to, I assume we're going to be plugging this uh, solid state today into the hyper? Yes. So we're going to be using or this blazing. top Sorry, stop the here, blazing. the blazing. Yep. Yep. Okay. Got it. Um, so now this one is a little bit taller. This is a better designed heat sink. If I lift this up, you can really see the difference in thickness looking at it from oh, the top wow. of the board. And then obviously you can see these fins cut in here. The, you'll see this across all the heat sinks. These fins are designed so that the heat flows into those fins and then air flows through that and takes the heat away. Gotcha. That's cool. Again, it's that uh, business park design <clears throat> that we always love <laughs> yeah, to see. Yeah. Uh, we're installing that RAM right now. The RAM today, we are using two 16 gig sticks for a total of 32 gigs of G-Skill DDR5 5600. This is some pretty severe RAM. It is RGB on, it's RGB on it, um, but it's uh, this is some fast RAM. Yeah, it is. I mean, anything DDR5 now is just blazing fast already, but this is the 5600 speed, which is really getting up there. The fastest DDR5 I've seen is 6000, which I think we did in last week's build. We did it in one of the build last week. Um, so yeah, 5600 is still, I mean, that is so fast. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, this, it's interesting because this system can actually punch up up to as far as 7200 overclock. Mm. Yeah, that'll be fun. Wait, to, for the RAM, that's, to get that that's going. nuts. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure it'll uh, be a bit before yeah. we see that um, just available. Um, to buy, but they'll definitely get there. Oh, God, it was yeah. the same way with DDR4. You know, it started out as 2133, and it seems like now the standard for DDR4 is 3200. So, yeah, uh, max capacity on this board is 128 gigs, and the solid state that we're going to be installing today is going to be the two terabyte Samsung 980 Pro NVMe M.2 SSD. Now, I'm assuming that's already in there. Yes. Yeah. We've. Okay, yeah. We dropped that we in there got that. first, yes. Got it. So we've got that in place. We've got our RAM there. We've obviously got our i9-13900K in place, all making this part of the, uh, you know, <laughs> building this out. This has got some RGBs already built into the board, but we also have all of these fans that are going to be popping in there as well. One of the things you can see on this shot is the copper plating from the CLX Quench 360 liquid cooler. Now, Paul, you mentioned earlier... Mm -hmm. about Hayden had worked on an open loop. 
So right. let's go over, for those people who might not know, what is the difference between an open and a closed loop system? Yeah, so for liquid cooling your system, you have open loop and closed loop. Open loop refers to a system with an open radiator that you would, or an open, really just whole system that you would add fluid into um, to get that going. Fluid um, you would see. Yeah, fluid open you would part. see. Um, a lot of custom tube bending, really showcase systems there. And a closed loop system is what we're using here, which is this all-in-one liquid cooler. It's referred to as an AIO. You can see Hayden's putting the fans on the radiator right now. So there's already coolant in this. You just get it, install the right bracket for your motherboard, and that's it. Plug it in and it'll work. You won't have to ever add any coolant to this or do any sort of maintenance on it. I will say that I have... Uh... Because I have a tendency to leave my streaming PC on mm -hmm. so long and for so often, uh, it's only it's only fan cooled, and I'm really honestly thinking about looking into the possibility of an open loop system for my uh, for my stream build. When I, once I'm once I'm ready to upgrade. Yeah, it's definitely. I mean, open loop. You're gonna get the best cooling out of that because there's just physically so much more cooling in those builds. Um, so obviously you can cool better. Usually there, we put a couple radiators in the system, depending on if it's a single loop or dual loop. Um, so yeah, you definitely get better cooling numbers with that. And it's a really, it looks great. So if you could like have it off on the side yeah. in your stream, it just looks cool. Well, I'm with, with as beautiful as the PCs, as my other PC is going to be, I am going to uh, definitely be switching things up here. Uh, I, I, may, I may end up swapping over from a green screen background in certain shots to uh, having my PCs just sitting right behind me. Like, all I could think of is Flight of the Navigator when the big engine things came up. I don't know, I just dated myself by naming a movie from 1989. Um, anyways, it is big, it's not important. Those would be behind me, like my engines mm -hmm. would be cool. That would be really cool. means a yeah, lot like of cable. Gaming PC and your streaming <laughs> PC, that'd be really cool. Yep, with them fighting each other in the back. Yeah. <sighs> with arms, it'd be awkward. Uh, all right, so now we've obviously got our fans on our radiator. Let's talk about how that works. Yeah, so we've Hayden's oh. mounted our fans to the radiator already. Um, and why we do this is the same reason we build the motherboard outside the case. It's just we have more room here. Uh, work with. So we've got these fans pushing air through the radiator right now. There's two ways you can mount your fans, or really three ways you can mount your fans on a radiator. And that's uh, either push or pull, or you can do both if your case has the space for it. Um, typically, it's better to be pushing air through the radiator, so that's how we've got this set up. Um, so yeah, we've got the fans mounted there. Hayden's got his thermal paste on the CPU, so we can show that real quick before you squash that plate down. Yep, there we go. Little dabble do ya. Yep, so once we get our plate on there, that copper piece you were talking about before, um, that's really going to smash that thermal paste down and spread it out. And then once the system gets running and it gets warmer, that thermal paste will spread a little bit even more. Yep. Uh, Aquamarie says, good morning. Hello, how are ya? Uh, Red Kensu. Or, no, yeah. RDK. We'll just call you Hensu. How about that? Uh, Hensu mentioned 89 was a good year. Honestly, it's baffling that that movie is that long ago <laughs> uh beautiful motherboard i agree skinny it's got some great colors i love the camouflage element to it also the way that these boards light up it really helps it, I, I don't know, i feel like the colors really reflect off the board well let's see here and so we've got somehow hayden managed to get himself a power tool again <laughs> Oh, <laughs> fine. All right. Hensu graduated in high school in 89. Nice. I graduated in 94, so not far behind yet. Everybody else is like, I wasn't even born yet. You know. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I graduated back when I still had hair. All there right, we go. so uh, you can see Hayden kind of wrapping this um, fan header pump here. Um, around there. So we're doing this for cable management to make it look better. Um, but r the big thing you want to focus on when you're installing this is you want this header to be plugged into either a CPU fan header. A lot of boards now will say pump or AIO next to that fan header. That's the one you want to plug it into because that header specifically will regulate voltage based on temperatures. So when you don't need your pump to be running that fast, it'll slow it down. And when you need it, it'll speed it up. 
Awesome. Perfect. Look at that. Sweet. Absolutely gorgeous board. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we're about ready to mount this board into the case. Lots of things to look at when it comes to uh, this case. Obviously, it is the Fantex uh, case, and it is in. It's got some really unique features about it, which we'll take a look. As you can see right there, those cables on the side, there are Velcro straps there that are designed to assist in cable management and uh, where everything goes into. So, you're going to set that aside and lay this down. Oh, yeah. All right, so Hayden's going to install the case fans next before we get our board okay. in there. As the fans are concerned, these are GameDS Aeolus M2 ARGB fans. They're a white frame, which goes great with the color scheme of this PC frame, but also, not only do the fan blades light up, so do the rings around the fan blades. They're yeah, very, these very fans bright. look great. Um, you can see them in our giveaway build, too, um, for this month. We use those in our, our pink, also our white Evolve. They look great. We've always had the black version of these. The white is relatively new, and we all really like them here. They're my favorite. Yeah. There it is. Uh, G Stats mentioned, uh, wish, I, uh, wish I had this motherboard. CLX upgraded mine to an MSI Mag B550 Tomahawk. Nice. It's a good board. Uh, and I'm very appreciative of that. It's a very good board. So and it must be on its way. <laughs> Yes, uh, Skinny Boston mentions white on white on white. Yeah, it is it is a new trend. And if you look at the, I, I, it's brightening up rooms. The more that I've seen the white cases, the way that it makes an office feel brighter, it makes your, your streaming environment feel brighter. Because like when Logitech started coming out with like the white mouse that I use, I didn't, all I thought was, okay, that'll be dirt, look dirty. Well, except for it didn't. It actually kind of brightens my desk up. So I switched over to a white keyboard and, and I looked at all my, all of my accessories we're black. All of them. This is very dark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I've been digging it. Okay. We've got those uh, fans in the front. Now, Paul, let's talk about airflow and how these are going to affect and how they, and, and where these are aimed at. Yeah, so this case is going to have seven fans total. We've got three of the case fans being installed in the front. As you can see there, you see the two. Hayden's got the third one up there. We're gonna have one in this mesh back here where my hands are, has exhaust, and then there's three more that you see can that you see are mounted to the radiator, and the radiator is gonna be mounted to the top of this case. So we're gonna gotcha. have and three intakes in the front and four exhaust, one in the back and three out the top. Gotcha. So that's gonna go, was that that's gonna create a negative pressure zone. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, which is which is good because you've got all that air immediately exhausting. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, airflow. And on this case, like this is this is the case that I use for my personal rig at home. Um, and I just have four fans. I've got three in the front and one in the back, and that's that's plenty. So having seven is just even better. Yeah, absolutely agree. Now, from this angle, you can see the little grid over on the bottom of the case. If you wanted to pull that out real quick and show them what that is while we have a chance before things get all in there, what is that? So this is a dust filter. This is for our power supply. Our power supply is going to mount down here, and it's going to intake air through the bottom and exhaust it out this hole that my hand's going into right here. So this is ensuring that no pet hair, dust, stuff like that gets sucked into the power supply. And we do yep. have that on the front of the case as well. We've already pulled it off so we can install those fans. But I'll grab it real quick. If you can see it here. It's always amazing how light those cases are before you put everything inside of them. It is, yeah. <laughs> Once you get the, like, the panels now are just the heaviest part because they're all glass. It's like, this yeah. is definitely a two-hand carry case. But once you get all this stuff out, it's like I could just carry this anywhere doesn't weigh anything yeah and of course uh for anybody who has missed our conversations about this before how do you tell the difference between the front and the back of the fan yeah that's a great question so it used to be that you had arrows printed on the sides of fans that would point the direction that the fan blade would spin and then the direction the air would flow but it's just um a lot simpler now honestly so Basically, yeah, if you, if you see these fan blades or this grill at the back, these four things, you know that's where the air is coming out of. 
So if you're looking at a fan, you don't see any of these pieces like a fan grill, you know that's where air is coming in. There we go. Nice. Yep. And that's why you don't see fan grills on video card fans. That's why you only see the blades there because it's, you know, blowing air onto the card. All right, now we're just prepping the final stages of getting all of our stuff on there. Mm-hmm. Uh, very important thing to remember if for some reason you inst you're installing your motherboard into a new case and uh, either the I.O. D shield doesn't line up or suddenly none of your PCI E slots line up, please check whether you have it mounted correctly or if you have the wrong board or the wrong case. Yeah. Because that has happened. Not to here, but to a friend of mine. Okay. So uh, best practices when you're installing a motherboard. All right, so biggest thing here, um, this board has a built-in I.O. shield, which we've talked about before, um, but that refers to the metal part on the back of the case where you plug in your USBs, audio, stuff like that. Um, some boards come with an I.O. shield that's just a sheet of metal, so you obviously want to install that. It goes right here. You can first. see my hand. You want to install that first before you get your mother's board screwed down, and then you realize, oh, I didn't install it. Got to pull your motherboard out. Um, but a lot of these higher-end boards are coming with a pre-installed on the board, which is great. Um, so after that, you want to make sure all your standoffs are installed correctly. Which we had to add one. Yeah, we did. Because it has... Because it has a second hole. So the standoffs are really easy to see on this case. They're these black screw-looking things that are mounted here. Mm -hmm. um, and this is actually what the motherboard's going to sit on. So the motherboard's not actually sit touching any of this white area. It's sitting on these standoffs, and then a screw goes in here to secure the motherboard there. Um, these are very important because you want to make sure that... Um, you don't have a standoff where there isn't a hole in your board because that will be metal touching your board that could short out things. Um, so very important step that's easy to overlook. Make sure your standoffs are incorrectly. Are there spe is there something different about the holes in the board intended for the standoffs? So pretty, it's pretty much all universal except for ASRock on some of their boards. What I can show you right here. Um, so if we look to this camera, you can see we've got a uh, motherboard mounting hole here and a motherboard mounting hole here. They're a little easy to see because they have the silver kind of around them. This yeah. one right here is not on every board. I don't know why it's here. It's usually just uh, for regular ATX, three at the top, three in the middle, and three at the bottom. But for some reason, ASRock puts this hole on some of their boards. Um, so we did add that one in here. Now, if you're building this at home and you just didn't add the standoff, it's better to not have a standoff than to have an extra one. So if you just want to do the three in the top, three in the middle, and three in the bottom, that's totally fine. Ivory, you're hilarious. He's like, is that a code written on the side of that drill? Yeah. And then, no. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> you can try. <laughs> All right, we have a code drop, people. It's pink dash seven W O six. That is uh, seven world organization six. Wicked Observation six seven Y ogres six. That is an old one. No, it maybe it is an old one. Uh, <laughs> pink seven W O six is uh, well, it's it's a code for those of you who might not have had it. Had it. I'll let I figure that all out. All right, right now we've got all the board going in as you can see. Now we've got multiple PCIe slots on this uh, on this ASRock Z790 Steel Edge and Wi-Fi. So we've got PCIe five, uh, three, four, and five on this board. One of each. What are some of the advantages of having the different uh, the different generations, different revisions of PCIe? So it really is a lot like your M.2 style with the blazing and ultra and super giga i don't know all the different words but really the the biggest thing is the newest one is the faster transfer speed um sometimes it will affect voltages too um, but the biggest <clears throat> thing is the transfer speed there okay and they are backwards Ladies compatible slide. which is nice so if you had like a pci Good. gen 3 card you could put it in a gen 5 slot it's just going to run at that gen 3 speed or whatever the card is um there you go. A radiator uh, going in here. Oh, go ahead, DJ. 
Oh, I say, Lady Slash, she says hello. Hello, hello. We do have a new code out that is uh, pink. You see VJ. University of California, Valencia joggers. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else to put there. Um, yeah, there you go. Oh, God, that, yeah, somebody yesterday on my stream was like, hey, pink dash T-R-L-L. No, that's, that's not a code. Saying <laughs> a total request live. Yeah. That was honestly the first thing that rolled in my head. I was like, oh, there's a TRL reference, and then nope. Okay, so now as you can see that big X in the back, that's your that's your AIO mount. Right, yeah, that's our AIO bracket there. Surrounding that CPU socket. So we've got our radiator mounted to the top of the case. Now, something that's kind of interesting yep. with this case, looking in from the side, you really only see the fans in the top. This radiator is kind of tucked up in here on the lip. You can see a little bit. It is, I noticed area. that. Um, but yeah. Very, very interesting. I'm going to go ahead and get our video card out. We're not quite ready for it now, but I'm just going to go ahead and start unboxing yeah. it. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and chat about it, though. It is a, an RTX 4090 24 gig. All right, yeah. So we've got the PNY version here. Beast of a card. Obviously, it's the 4090. I wish I had this in my, in my own system. If I remember correctly, this thing has uh, has some lights on it. It does, yeah. This will have quite a few RGB lights going through it. And it's just an overall really big card here. So let's get this out. I'll look get all the that. plastic off of it. We can get a Holy look at cow, it. that thing is gorgeous, but also shiny. Yeah, look at look that. that. Well, you see this brick that actually gets installed right here? That's, uh, that's yeah. crazy. Once it becomes three, that's a lot. Well, and it's so, what's amazing to me is that it's all for one little tiny square. Right, yeah, it is, it is. Let's see, I've got that here. Let me get this plastic off and I'll grab that Yeah. That card. I've got it right next to me. Yeah, P, PNY did a really good job with the decor on this. Mm -hmm. You got the matte black on the back side, which is gonna be facing down anyway, so you're not really gonna see it, but you will see the lights reflected. Uh, down below your on the bottom of your case mm -hmm. which is good because with that white surface that it's going to be aimed at it's going to have great reflection yeah it will all right so just got a few more things to pull off here we've got all of our <clears throat> video outputs this has one hdmi and three display port you can see right there and then now i'll grab our test card to really show you what a video card really is. Yeah. So we've got our nice card here. This is our GTX 1050 Ti. This is a dead card that's out of warranty. So that's why we've taken this apart. Um, I've got the screws taken out of it. So I'll kind of show you what this card looks like now. This is obviously smaller than our 4090 here. But the big thing to look at when we're looking at these is the PCB. So you see this little, it kind of shines a little different, but um, this like orange line here and right mm -hmm. here that's our PCB so once you take the cooler off this is all your video card is right here Wow! this thin piece of PCB so if I were to take this giant cooler off this 4090 it would be just as thin as this obviously the PCB would extend out a little bit um, but this is what it would be <coughs> so you can see our GPU here and typically you have your memory chips around the GPU um, but yeah, so when you're looking at cards that are this big, the bulk of it is just to deal with the heat that it generates. Which is wild to think that something like that gets that hot. Mm -hmm. It really is. Uh, so uh, one comment from Radical mentioned that I uh, wish the, the USB-C were still included in GPUs. Also, huge shout out and thank you to Silk Chaos and IVV for their tier one subs we appreciate you yeah, yeah. uh but let's uh but let's let's talk about that USB C. why why did that come and go so it it was on a few cards and you can probably still i'm sure you can still get cards with it it's just not a commonly used thing like i've never used the type c on a video card have you ever used a hayden never yeah have you ever used i can't it imagine there's no, I, I, I yeah. don't even, I have yet to see a monitor that has a USB-C in. 
Yeah, I think it might have. I, so some video cards also started putting like video outputs on like this side of the card, like the outer side of the card. I know that was like to help hook up like a VR headset and stuff like that. Um, but oh, yeah, I've okay. never personally used the Type C connector on a video card. Uh, Grim with the 200 bits. Let's go. Let's start a hype train. Oh yeah. There you go. Nice. Thank you. All right, so something uh, that to note also that comes with this video card. With a card this big, we're going to need a anti-sag bracket or a GPU brace. So we've got one here. The there one that go. comes with this PNY card is a really good one. Um, it looks like the Leon Lee ones we use for most of our cases. So this bracket right here mounts to the motherboard, and then we install the card, and we have this adjuster piece that will hold the other side of the card up. I'll try to get this in front of a white background there. That's what all these holes are. We can slide this up and down and get it set where we need. So we'll show that a little bit later in the show. So, and I, I have an interesting thing that I just looked up, just because I know how much these are. The uh, so just just to put this in perspective, everybody, this PNY card weighs one thousand nine hundred and fifteen grams. Now I had to do the math on this because. I hate math and I do it on a PC. Uh, but that is a 4.2 pound card. Yeah, we could do some curls with this thing. Like, that's nearly a five pound bag of sugar. That thing is ridiculous. Yeah. So that's why it needs that anti sag bracket because the only thing holding it onto that board is that little bitty PCIe frame. Mm -hmm. And you can only reinforce those so much. Yeah, this is a beast of a card. Um, so every system we ship that has a big card, we obviously want to put a brace in. And then when we ship them, we have packing foam that we can put in the system. And it pops the chemicals mix, and then the bag expands around everything in the PC. So that helps us in shipping. Shipping is honestly a really big challenge in PC building, getting it there um, without any shipping damage. So these braces combined with that, has we've seen a lot of success with it. Yep. Uh, also, when you get your PC, be careful pulling that out. Yeah, take your time pulling that out because it does form around the components. It shouldn't take much force. Just, yeah, take your time with it. Yep. Doc Chaos fun. is in the house. This is, uh, I saw a PC where they used the internal video port on the GPU for a 12 inch screen mounted in the case to display a system monitor with a huge case. I would say so. Good grief. Yeah, those setups are cool. I, I've only seen a couple of those, but they are pretty sweet. You just got like this box that you can carry around and it's got everything there. By the way, we are uh, two minutes and 15 seconds away from getting a whole level one hype train. We're at a level one, going to level two, 75% of the way there. Uh, don't forget, you can sub to this channel. You can also use your prime subs on this channel. It all goes to help afford my hair implants. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> I'm just getting a small strip. Yeah, that budget implant. Yes, absolutely. Basically, they're just going to hot glue some Velcro to my head, and we're going to call it a day. Uh, now, we've got this beautiful uh, th this beautiful power supply. This is a 1,000-watt Fantex Amp Series 80 plus gold. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. Yeah, so like I said, this is a Fantex Amp 1000 80 plus gold fully modular power supply. So what we mean by that is no cables for this power supply are pre-soldered in. And so we can only use the cables that we want. Um, so that is going to help us with our tie-up cable management airflow. Um, just overall looks better. Um, so you can see all these ports here on this side of the case. These are all our yeah. connections for our cables that we need. Obviously, we won't be using all of these, but they are here if we need them. All righty. Of course, that's going to be what's going in that lower back corner. Obviously, the air mm -hmm. coming up. And then going out the back. And the nice thing is it does match the case with the doors on the Fantex cases. You'll actually be able to see that lower area down there. So. Most of the time they're black. So it's really cool to have this one. Not a lot of brands make white. Yeah. I think that's right. <clears throat> yep. I was surprised that this white one didn't have the option for cable sleeves. Yeah, we haven't seen um, a cable mod kit for it or any cable kits like that. This is a relatively new power supply, so it does take some 
you know, R and D time for the cable sleeve companies to come up with kits for them. Yeah. And I'm not sure how popular this is. EVGA kind of seems to really be the uh, the leader in like higher end power supplies. So <clears throat> yeah, there's a e lot. EVGA has always those. been solid. Mm -hmm. Always been solid. Yeah. Nicole, I find Nicole here coming in with some bits. Had some bits left. Uh, up. But you know what? We've got all the opportunities to start another hype train. Hype trains are fun. They're a train that's full of hype. hype. Yeah. <laughs> so there we go. All right. So, so pulling out that back panel, what's uh, so why is that important to, to put on and mount? So this case is a little bit different design with a power supply. Some power supplies, you just put the cables in the hole here and pull it all the way through. This case, it actually has a bracket that you pull out and you mount to the power supply. And then all the cables will go in. And these two thumb screws that you see on both sides will be used to secure that to the case. Gotcha. So that basically means that in the event that you do need to add something or switch something out, you, can, you have easy access to just pull that up and slide it right out of the back of the case without having to pull everything apart, right, so yeah. to speak. Yeah, you've got two thumb screws you can loosen, and then, yeah, like maybe you added a hard drive so you need another state of power. You could just slide it out just a little yeah. bit to give yourself some room to plug it in, so. <laughs> All righty. Got that laid out, looking like an alien. He's just going to feed those cables into the back. Now, obviously, Hayden already knows which cables he's going to need for the PC based on what's being installed. So he's going to he connected those, and now he's just going to feed them to the back, get this power supply in there and put into place, get it secured down, and then we'll start connecting all these different cables. Now, as you can see in this shot, there are words printed on the end of these cables. So let's talk about uh, how you identify what goes where with your cable. Yeah, so I really like this when power supply companies do this, where they print where the cable is going, what kind of cable it is on it. Um, not all yes. power supply manufacturers do this, but these guys do, and it's great. So, for instance, our PCIe and our CPU power, sorry, let me get this on camera here, are both 8-pin connectors. However, you can't plug the CPU into a video card, and vice versa, you can't plug the video card into a CPU. Um, so they're labeled very well here, CPU. The other nice part about this labeling is you know which end goes into the power supply. So the end that's plugged yeah. into the power supply will say PSU. Um, now you can see those are separated here, and yeah, I just, I, I wish that would be a, like a standard. What that a requirement. A requirement for all the cables, because when, once you get those cables that don't have them printed on, if you've ever mixed them up <laughs> or anything, you're kind it's of kinda just hard like, to tell. oh man, where's yeah. this one go? Now, I do have a question. Why is it that you've got them, some that snap apart and some that, that, that snap together, especially if you're yeah. going to use them on the same space anyways? So that's the difference between a video card 8-pin and a CPU 8-pin. So a video card 8-pin is a 6 plus 2, which you can see right here. I've got it in my hand. It's 6, and then the 2 part portions off because some video cards only use a 6-pin power. Most of the current ones now are all 8. Um, so this is kind of just letting it work with an older video card, but our CPU is actually a 4 plus 4, so it's two actual different cables, because some really low-end okay. motherboards um, will just use a 4-pin power connector and won't use the full 8. Now, pretty much everything you see us build on this show is going to be at least 1 8, sometimes 2 8s, and then sometimes wow. it's an 8 plus a 4. Okay. Which is a total of 13. <laughs> <laughs> You're correct. Uh, yeah, by the way, give pink is the giveaway command in here. Uh, X Ryo Forgotten. Hello, how are you? Welcome to the show. Glad to have you here. And of course, for everybody who wants to keep an eye on what's happening, don't forget this show is every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific. That's 2 Eastern. And this is where we come in and to break down custom builds. Wow, you know, I'm struggling today and I don't know why. Uh, break down custom builds and assemble them uh, from the ground up which is a lot of fun. Of course, if you have questions, please feel free to throw them in the chat. They can be about this system or about other systems, about your system. These are the guys who have all the answers. And if they don't have answers, there are also encyclopedias and the interwebs. Um, but they pretty much know what they're doing. 
I say pretty much, and I mean that sarcastically, like they do things that I've, I'm still figuring out and taking notes on. For example, let's talk about cable management and um, best practices. So, Hayden, you've I've seen you when you're working on O11 versus this, and I, it feels like you have two different paths or of steps that you go through when you're connecting things, depending on the case. Yeah, it all depends on the case for me. Um, okay. So, like in Evolve X, I'll flip it so you can see. There's two. Uh, there's going to be two rows of cables so you got your you know your 24 pin out here and then like your usb 3.0 all that and then you have your main bundle over here and so basically what on the evolve x it's going to be two bundles going down connecting together and then tucking underneath between where the hard drive would be which we don't i don't think we have one right yeah, nice and so yeah oh, 11 it's it's different um i kind of make my own little way as i go and then perfect it and then use it again and as you can see all those zip tie angles and anchors sitting out there uh, will eventually be cut off but he likes doing that at once because it's a fun little high <laughs> let's talk about the well how many hard drives you can fit in this case all right so you can fit quite a few <coughs> in this case as Hayden pointed out in the bottom there there's a tray for um, extra hard drives that you can mount two and a half inch or three and a half inch drives now those trays are stackable as well so with how much space we have in here, we could probably fit at least six hard drives in the bottom here. That would Which definitely wicked. be excessive. I don't think, you know, there's no need. haven't built a system like that that wasn't a server in a long time, but there's plenty of room for extra storage. And what's nice, this yeah. bottom case fan here, you can see in the front, this is actually uh, somewhat below that shroud. So this is gonna provide airflow and cooling for those hard drives as well. I didn't even think about that, but that's a great, mm -hmm. Great observation, I didn't notice that. Uh, GStats asked if this is a customer build. This is not a customer build. This is a build I put together for me to do some testing on. So I don't think I Got built it. this motherboard before yet, which is why we're gonna try this. So this with a 13900K and a 4090, we're gonna kind of see what we can push here. Awesome, which is uh, which is fun. Let's talk, let's talk about the testing real quick. So something that's yeah. really interesting that I've, that I've always been fascinated by and that I love, and I think it's part of that whole appreciation for attention to detail. Once PCs are built, whether they're part of the ready to ship group or whether they are custom builds, what happens to them? Yeah, so every machine we build here, like you said, regardless of it's for a customer, for a show, for our testing, um, once it's done being built, it goes into our testing and integration department. And that's where we do all the testing on the system. The first thing we do, uh, once it boots up, as we get into the BIOS, we'll make sure our RAM speed's correct. Um, depending on the operating system, like Windows 11 needs to have secure boot on, Windows 10 doesn't, so we'll do a few BIOS settings in there, maybe adjust fan speed. We'll make sure all of our storage devices are showing up, so M.2, 2.5 inch, 3.5 inch. Um, you can see all that in the BIOS. And then once that's all um, been checked and verified that it's good, that's when we'll load the operating system and any games or, any, or anything, any other programs we want to load. And once that's set, we put the system through a 12-hour stress test. Um, we use various uh, benchmarking softwares, 3D Mark, Prime 95, Furmark. There's, there's quite a few that we use. And doing that for 12 hours allows us to find out if something was going to break. Maybe we got like a faulty video card or a faulty RAM stick. Um, it's, it's most likely going to break in that 12-hour cycle. So that allows us to make sure that the system is completely stable um, and ready to ship out to the customer. Perfect. Uh, uh, Noma, Noma Car. Noma Car. Noma. Nomacker. Listen, I'm going to apologize ahead of time because I think I've just screwed up your name four times in a row. Uh, it's asked, how does this giveaway work? Well, here's the thing. Uh, we're going to, if you type exclamation give pink, you'll see a link that goes to our surf giveaway page. There are multiple different ways to earn entries into the giveaway. Uh, whether it's following the channel, following uh, our social medias at CLX Gaming. Um, or and of course following the Twitch channel, following my Twitch channel, there's lots of different ways that that that, that, that occurs. And then we've got all the codes that are given out on Tuesdays and Thursdays during the show, on the weekends over on my channel, in our Discord, discord.gg/clxgaming, and of course uh, across our social media, and that is YouTube, TikTok, and Twitter at CLX Gaming. Uh, slap that follow button, people. 
something with yep, these absolutely. white cases when we're doing the Velcro straps. It's very easy to tell when some of those little Velcro hooks fall off. Mm -hmm. So I'm just making sure we're getting all those out of here. Yep. There you go. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is ever end up with anything that may somehow contact a fan because it sounds awful. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those things. Although, it would be, if you really wanted to mess with somebody, you just take a clothespin and a, and a playing card. Just there you go. Mount it in there. There's a... Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that is a terrible, terrible joke. Which would still be funny. Be a good prank. Uh, for those... Yeah, right? Uh, by the way, in a month's time, so coming up in four weeks will be the weekend of the 24th of March. You can join up and team up with uh, CLX Live in Boston. We're going to be at PAX East. Uh, we've got some fun things going on there. We've got the whole squad that's going to that, that's gonna be rolling up there. If you see us, make sure you say hi. Uh, we love to meet the fans. We love to meet you. It's going to be great. Gorilla, hello, welcome. Good to have you. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be in Boston. you got a month to grab yourself a hotel room and some tickets to passes. If you're in the New England area, definitely pop on over. Uh, it's going to be great. It's going to be cold, but it's going to be great. <laughs> it's always cold there. I don't think I've ever... The only time I've ever been to Boston in the summer was when I was DJing. I was, it's at the, I was DJing at the Avalon, and that was back in the late 90s. And um, I, don't think, I, don't, I don't even think that club is there anymore, to be honest. But I'm super excited. I, I've never been... Um gonna hunt me down a lobster roll at least once maybe twice oh i know a there. couple spots to go to for those Decided. yep uh maybe uh in, maybe next week we'll do a giveaway for our roommate for the show <laughs> <laughs> there we go there we go uh <laughs> the uh need of temperance says if you have a gas car put a harmonica on in the exhaust on the engine or just take one of where'd he go Oh, crap. He's missing. Or you just take a rubber chicken. <laughs> I have Santa chicken. <laughs> Literally, take a rubber chicken, pull the heads off, stick it in the exhaust. It is the most horrific sound, and it's awesome. That being said, my housemate was not very fond of that joke. <laughs> that was hilarious. Because he had music on and didn't hear it and got to work. <laughs> yes. Uh, Viral Chaos Gaming says, hey, y'all, I cannot wait to get my custom system from y'all. That is awesome. We're excited for your, that you ordered one. Uh, we're actually looking forward to hearing your feedback about it. So it'll be, that's good stuff. Good stuff. Gorilla says, I'm building my first PC this year, and uh, my limit of money is $1,800. Mm. So... It's a good budget. Yeah, that's a good budget. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a good budget. <clears throat> mm -hmm. What do you think are some good things to take a look at with an $1,800 budget there, Paul? Yeah, so... The biggest thing you want to look at when you're budgeting out your PC is obviously, you know, most of your money you want to put in your CPU and GPU. So, you know, your processor and your video card. That's where you want to spend the bulk of your money. Um, after that, I would recommend, with an $1,800 budget, you're going to get a great gaming machine. Um, I would recommend at least 16 gigs of RAM, probably a one terabyte M.2 storage for your operating system and any of the main games you play, and then go with like a two terabyte, four terabyte, three and a half inch storage drive. Um, that'll save you some money as opposed to just getting a really large storage M.2 drive. The prices on M.2s really jump up um, the higher the higher capacity they go. Um, some other areas where you can save some money um, is on your power supply and your case. Um, so if you really want to put just all that money in a CPU and GPU, you know, go with a non-modular power supply and make sure it's obviously got enough wattage out there. Um, with that budget, you know, you can probably get a 750 to 1,000 watt for a good price. Um, and then case, just make sure it, it'll uh, support the motherboard you're getting. So the things you want to look at there is a, they call it the form factor. So like this size case and motherboard is ATX. That's pretty much the standard desktop. Then you've got EATX, which is a little bit bigger than this. The board is just a little bit wider. And then you've got MATX, which is smaller, and then ITX, which is the smallest. Yep. And, uh, you know, since you mentioned that what you're looking to do, let's, I, I would love to talk a little bit about something that is very near and dear to my heart, and that's uh, one of the best things that 
we, we do here at CLX Gaming. At CLXGaming.com, we make it absolutely as simple as possible to get a machine that is designed to meet your needs, and it's going to look as cool as you can figure it out how to make it. Uh, with our custom design system, you can choose between the different sizes of case, different fans, motherboards, hard drives, processors, you name it, we've got it, including peripherals, overclocking, and more. And don't worry, you don't have to be an expert to use our site because in the event that you select something that's not quite compatible, it's either, either compatible or not, uh, that little green button is gonna change to solve conflicts. Now, the reason that we do that is to show you what the options are. Maybe you need to change to DDR5 RAM. Maybe you have DDR5 RAM and you need a DDR, uh, and you've chosen a DDR4 board. Maybe you've got an Intel board and you've got a AMD processor. All these little things are easily solvable in there and that ensures that you're gonna have a system that is going to run excellently and going to uh, fit what you're trying to do. Now, don't worry, you don't have to only use the custom design. We also have ready to ship models. Our ready to ship models are all pre-built here in the studio by the CIs and they're all with that same 12 hour testing. And uh, for $1,800, I'll be honest, uh, you might also wanna look over here and check it out because there's some incredible deals going on right now with some absolutely stellar systems. So check it out right now to, and step up your game. Go to clxgaming.com. Ta-da! I did nice. a thing. Yeah, I see Izzy Gorilla saying he's going for a 3060 with a terabyte SSD and an i7 12700K. That is a that's a solid build for that price. I would say if you're not buying it now or soon, I'm sure the 4060 will be coming out later this year. So maybe if you can wait to see how that performs. And if you're interested in that, go for that. It'll probably be around the same price as a 3060. But if you're not, you still want to go with 3060. Once that launches, we should see the prices on 3060 go down. So you might save yourself some money by waiting a little bit if you're not in a rush. Absolutely. Uh, a girl asks, how much do you charge for builds? So, and uh, oh, yeah, no. go ahead, answer that one. Yeah, so there isn't like a flat rate beef um, um, build fee or anything like that. You can just go on our site and configure it and see what it would come out to. Um, some things to keep in mind, you know, a lot of the, um, you'll see a lot of like, oh, it's cheaper to build a PC on your own. And yeah, sure, it, it's definitely, I mean, it's cheaper to build a car on your own. It's cheaper to do everything on your own. Um, but, you know, when you buy a PC through us, you get one year warranty on parts and labor and then lifetime tech support. And if anything goes wrong, you can reach out to us um, and we'll make sure you get taken care of. So, you know, you know add that, add that into the value there. But by all means, you know, if you want to build one, absolutely build one. PC building is super fun. I'm not going to, you know, try to get anybody to not build their own PC. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the cool thing I love about the show is it really does showcase, uh, you know, the good notes, best practices. And, of course, anybody who's running into a problem, I wish I'd have had a show like this to jump to tune into when I was building my very first PC because I did so many things incorrectly. <laughs> a basic build that should have taken me an hour took me, what, six and a half hours to do because I had to keep taking things out. I had to keep unmounting the motherboard because of the stupid IO shield that I screwed up 18 times. Wait, that's how it goes on the first one. We've all been there. <laughs> so yeah, it can be. It was awful. PC building can be like a really intimidating thing to get into. Um, but just, you know, if it's your first time, take your time with it. You know, research everything. If you can do it on a show where we're here, ask us all the questions you need. There's plenty of good guides on YouTube um, to install everything. Yep. But the biggest thing is just take your time. You'll get it. It's, it's really, I like to describe it as adult Legos. You know, you just it's put. It's adult Legos. For sure. You know. Yeah. The scariest part is mounting your CPU. Once you've mounted your oh, CPU, yeah. you can have a big sigh of relief and everything else is easy peasy. Now, just to point out right here, what we've got uh, Hayden putting in, this is the SAG mm -hmm. corrector. It's not SAG corrector. It's a, it's, it's, it's a SAG mount mm -hmm. for the 4090. So uh, what where is this being drilled into? Right. We're screwed into. So this is being mounted to our motherboard. So it comes with these tall standoffs um, that screw uh -huh. into the already pre-existing standoffs. And then you install this bracket here. Now there's that slider arm that I showed. Hayden's got it right here. So all those holes you see in that bracket are for us to adjust this. So once we get the card in, we put that slider on, make sure it's supporting, and then screw it into those holes to secure it there. 
Yes. Anti-sag bracket. Absolutely right, Temperance. Um, and to you, the scariest part is cable management. I agree. Um, I'm, I'm going to be the first one to say I'm awful at cable management. I mean, I don't think I am. Ne I will be now if I ever to better build my own system because I've been watching and been part of the show for so long. Mm -hmm. But uh, also, we are almost at, we're going into our ninth month, aren't we? It's gone by so fast. It's, it's I know crazy. it's so it weird. It feels like a new thing, and it's really, it's really yeah. Not. But yeah, for cable uh, management, I mean, anytime we're training builders here, you know, we hire a lot of people who have built PCs on their own. And cable management is definitely the part that takes the longest, uh, at least if you're going for a professional tie-up like what we do. Yeah. Which is which is extremely impressive. Now look at the size of that card. What are some good, uh, I would say, best practices for making sure you're getting it in there without potentially damaging the card or the PCIe slot? Yeah, so the first thing you want to look at before you even start attempting to get the card in is these PCIe slot covers here on the back. Um, they're kind of off camera right now, um, but you want to make sure you've got all those taken out. That's where your video outputs are. That way, um, here we go. This is perfect. I yep. can adjust it. These slots right here. So like this is a three slot card, so we want to make sure those are opening. After you've got those taken out, then you're really wanting to align your PCIe into that slot that's there. And then you're looking for, there's a tab on the end of the slot. You're looking for that to pop up, and that will show that it's secured. And obviously on nice. a big card oh. like this, we do lay the system down because it's so heavy. Oh! First of all, I didn't realize you were Damon, but also that is definitely an option for cable management. Um, that is, that is, that's definitely a thing. <laughs> I will, uh, yeah, I will post this in our, in our Discord. Uh, for the show in the show's discord so that they can see this and see what I'm what what, what, we're, what we're referring to Let's see here So right now we're just getting that last bit drilled into the case So how difficult is it to really get that slider into the right spot? So it's kind of a tight ahead. little angle but once you have it on there, it kind of, yeah, I don't think we're ever going to be able to get a good shot of it. Yeah, it's just, it's so deep down there. But really, but there's two yeah. grooves that kind of grab onto that pre-existing bracket. So it's pretty easy to get on there. Like, like it stays in place and you just slide it up and make sure that it's supporting the weight of that video card and then just put the screw in like regular. There we go. I uh, put that in there so that you guys can see what Temperance sent me. <laughs> Clean. Oh yeah, no, that absolutely, gorilla. No, that's and that's that's what we're here is to help with. I just used that as a good segue to because I had to talk about the website anyway, so I just figured I would use that as a segue to go in there. Um, but yeah, and especially like sales during um, Amazon has great part sales periodically, especially like right around the holidays. Mm -hmm. um, I've I've found so. And also keep your eyes out for for uh, spot sales when they just have like a, a moment like different sites will have different momentary single day sales to draw traffic to their site which is interesting to find parts like that all right so we pretty much are wrapping up here now something will show and i like to show this on all the evolve x's is our cable <coughs> management so we were talking about before i can show you the before and after and the other part of this case is it has cable management doors that will cover those cables already and just give us a really clean look in the back. So, again, what a genius design! It's a genius design feature because it's not something you would think about until you did put it on. And then you're going, "This actually looks amazing." Yeah. So, like Hayden mentioned, we've got his two sets of cables here. So this already looks really good. This is neat. All the cables are bundled together. Um, mm -hmm. But with these, it's got these doors that will slide on. And just before we do that, let's mm -hmm. let's uh, point out what different areas. So we've got the, the lighting controller at the top. We didn't really talk about that a whole lot, but that's what's going to light the fans and, and coordinate those, correct? Right, yeah. yeah. Spin. It gives you power. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so you're, okay. you're talking about this box right here. Now, you can see our fan cable since we have white fans. It's nice the cables are white, so you can see where they plug in here. 
So yeah. this is what's going to be controlling our fans. We'll have a remote outside of the system for this where we can change the color, fan speed, stuff like that. And this is all powered by a single SATA power connection that's coming out the bottom here. Awesome. Wow, so much space. And yeah, that's so uh, one quick reminder, in the event that you do have to take anything out of your system or replace anything uh, in your system, take a quick picture with your phone of the cable management and the way that it's laid out so that you can try and get it back to that uh, into that design and that style as easily as possible. So, and now you uh, can one see quick it there thing. With the doors up. Oh, sorry, DJ. Oh no, you're good. You're good. Yeah. Like that's look how, how clean, clean it looks is. with those doors on. It looks great. If you didn't have those doors, you'd just be able to tie up the, the panel on. Mm-hmm. And uh, of course, that front panel has got a uh, filter on it, and then it's got a really unique feature. Not only does this have USB. Uh, USB ports the front under a cool kick flap, uh, but it also, the whole front of it, the PC lights up. Yes, yeah, so you can kind of see that at near the top of the front of the case that you're looking at right now, you can kind of see three gold dots right here. Now on our front panel, there's three pins that will make contact with that, and that was going to power our RGB that's on the front of this case. So once Hayden gets this side panel on, we'll go to that. So you can see our three pins right here. That's what's going to make contact with that and our RGB strip. So once again, a good look at this panel. This thing is beautiful. So we'll get this to Hayden. Nice. Uh, and the one thing I will point out that we didn't quite get a chance to talk about is the excessive amount of connectivity on, on this board. Not only is it Wi-Fi 6E, it also has a 2.5 gig Dragon port for the Ethernet port and an absolute plethora of USB slots in the back. Also, mad shout out to Cobb for that paint job. That is just wild. It, it looks so good, like the balance between the two. You've got space, and then you've got the brightness of the white. And then we're gonna about to have color, which is gonna be awesome. A lot of awesome. RGBs. Yeah, we've actually like got our custom painter, Dave, who he works hand in oh, hand Dave with Kyle and, and does this, yeah. Uh, Dave used to custom paint motorcycles, so it's pretty cool to have him in here doing PCs what? now. Yeah. Yeah. So we use all automotive paint here with automotive clear coat, so the paint is very high quality. We make sure what? the clear coat cures for the full process, um, and it's just—it's a really great look. Yeah, that's it's gorgeous. I'll just Nicely this done. So you can see this one like wow. crashing into the planet there. It's so cool. That is awesome. All righty, well, we'll go ahead and get this set up to be turned on. <clears throat> now the moment of truth. Oh. To see. Darkness. There we go. It, it all lit up uh, once we, uh-oh. There we, we go. We haven't even plugged in the machine yet. Okay, yeah. Sweet. The room was not there ready for this. Rotate this to try to get the glare off. Sorry, Hayden. Okay, good. And, uh, yeah, Scarecrow, by the way, for those of you who don't know, Scarecrow is Kyle. He's uh, one of the designers, obviously, and painters. He's incredible. Get it right there like that. Perfect. Nice. All right. The plug is going in. And it's All the moment right. of truth. Look at that. The motherboard lighting up the... the the GPU lighting up, it's glowing on the bottom. Are you ready? Let's do it. Let's see. Uh-oh, Hayden. Uh-oh. What did you do? We'll find out. Pretty sure. You didn't plug your power switch in. It got tied up. <laughs> <laughs> So if you want to see something cool here, how you can start a PC without the power switch. You jump it. Yeah, I'll show you this real quick. It's an easy way to test whether your power supply is on or off here. So I'm just going to take a piece of metal and touch these two headers, and it should kick on. Right there. It's magic. Nice. Look at that. Nice, absolutely incredible look to it. So we'll go ahead and plug this oh power kit or this uh, power switch in though, real quick. That way it's all tidied up. 
And while you guys are doing that, let's talk go once more over what's inside this incredible test build that is a space themed build and it's all sorts of awesome. So this build, of course, it has an Intel Core i9 13900K uh, uh, K processor, uh, and it's being mounted on a Z790 Steel Legend Wi-Fi uh, ASRock motherboard. It's got 32 gigs of DDR5, 5600 RAM, and of course the graphics are coming from that gorgeous PNY GeForce RTX 4090 card. The operating system is mounted on a 2 terabyte Samsung 980 Pro NVMe M.2. And of course the whole thing is being cooled by a CLX Quench 360 closed loop liquid cooler. It's an AIO with seven different Aeolus uh, M2 ARGB fans by GameDeus. And of course, that thousand watt Fantex amp, uh, amp series 80 plus gold power supply. Um, and all this fits into that beautifully custom designed case. Look at the colors on this thing. Yeah, I love this case. The the space case design with the white looks really good too. Let's pop. I'm just adjusting our tubes here. Okay. There we go. Nice. That looks rad. Yeah, that looks absolutely, absolutely amazing. Yeah, see there, you can see the fans on the front there. Yeah, look at that. We're just getting a little, getting a little light. the glare off there. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Absolutely great. Well done, guys. Uh, as most of you who've seen the show before know, we've started a whole new section, and it's called the After Show. It's the post build with our uh, master builder of the day. And of course, that's going to be with Hayden Hutchinson. So we are going to be going to a break here shortly. But first, uh, don't the giveaway for the pink, the powder pink PC, the Fantex power pink PC happens this uh, a week from today. Yeah, the week from today. It's the end of the month. It's a 28-day month, no leap year this year. Uh, so make sure you're getting all your entries in. You've picked up as many codes as you can. Make sure you're in our Discord at discord.gg slash CLX Gaming. Uh, you can catch our show every Tuesday and Thursday right here on twitch.tv slash CLX Gaming TV, where we're going to give out codes and more. Plus, you can pick some up on my channel on the weekends. You can also get some off of our socials. And that is at YouTube, TikTok, and Twitter at CLX Gaming. So with that being said, uh, on behalf of Jason in production,